Hello friends, this video on neat evolution is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 32. Parallelism is adaptive divergence, adaptive divergence of widely separated species, adaptive convergence of widely different species, adaptive convergence of closely related group. So parallelism is basically another name for parallel evolution. So what is parallel evolution? Now when convergent evolution is found in closely related species, it is called parallel evolution. Like, <clears throat> we have already discussed about convergent evolution. What is convergent evolution? It says that when completely unrelated groups, they tend by adaptations, they tend to have something in common. They have something which performs the same function. Then we call it a convergent evolution. Now, sometimes it might happen that the convergent evolution is found in closely related species. Now, when we talk about convergent revolution, that doesn't mean that closely related species cannot have something which have the same function. So that is also possible. And when that happens, then that type of convergent evolution is called parallel evolution. Because in that case, you know, you are basically not getting this type of a structure. So in that case, all those organisms are anyways very closely related. So you are basically getting parallel lines. And that is why you call it parallel evolution or parallelism. For example, the running habit in deer and horse. So if you compare deer and horse, they are not completely unrelated animals. They are both terrestrial animals sharing similar type of habitat, right? And if you look at the uh, this ra running habit in both of them, you would see that in case of deer, they have uh, deer is two-toed, whereas horse is one-toed. So it has two toes and horse has one toes plus two vestigial rigid bones. So that is what they have for running. But basically the function is the same. Like whatever toes they have, one is having two toe, one is having one toe, doesn't matter. But the function is the same for both of them. In both of them, their toes are helping them to run. So this is an example of convergent evolution. Now since these two organisms are also very closely related, so this type of evolution is called parallel evolution. So which would be the correct option? It would be convergence, obviously convergence of closely related groups. Question number 33. Continuity of germplasm theory was given by. So by now we all know what was this theory. This theory told that only the traits contained in the germ cells get inherited. Nothing that is there in the somatoplasm or the protoplasm of somato cells, somatic cells get inherited. They do not get passed on. So this was given by Wisman and this theory told that the Lamarck theory of inheritance which said that acquired traits get inherited, it is not correct. Question number 34. Hummingbirds and hawk illustrate convergent evolution, homology, adaptive radiation, parallel evolution. Now, when you look at the evolution of hummingbirds, you would see that a map of hummingbird family shows a rapid diversification from 22 million years ago. So it started with just uh, one or two species and then, you know, it kind of diversified to many species. So, in fact, hummingbirds fall into nine clades and they depend on nectar bearing flowering plants because that's their food. So, these birds continue to spread into new geographic areas. So, more and more species of birds as well as more and more species of the plant were formed over a period of time. So, this type of diversification is an example of adaptive radiation that is divergent evolution. So adaptive radiation is a type of divergent evolution where evolution of different species starts in a given area from a point and then it radiates to other areas and habitats. So hummingbirds and hawk they illustrate adaptive radiation. Question 35. Which was absent in the atmosphere at the time of origin of life? So as I mentioned that during chemical evolution the simpler molecules were form formed first. So what were those simpler molecules? Hydrogen, nitrogen, water, methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide. So they were some of the first formed molecules. And because of their presence, the first primitive atmosphere was called as the reducing atmosphere. You know why? 
because free oxygen was not present in the atmosphere so oxygen was absent in the atmosphere at the time of origin of life however if you look at the present atmosphere the atmosphere that we have today it has free oxygen and that is why it is called oxidizing atmosphere question number 36 homeostasis is tendency to change with change in environment tendency to resist change disturbance and regulatory control plants and animals extracts used in homeopathy so what is homeostasis it is basically the ability of a body to maintain a condition of equilibrium within its internal environment now have you noticed something for example let, let's take the example of our body temperature now if I ask you what is our normal body temperature, so it is approximately 98.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when the weather is very cold outside, let's say that it is the winter season, peak winters, when it's like very, very cold outside. So do you think that your body temperature changes accordingly? No, your internal body temperature still remains the same. Still, your normal body temperature is 98.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Similarly, even if it is peak summer, a hot sunny afternoon, but still your body temperature remains the same. Why? Because the body somehow regulates it in such a way that it is able to maintain a constant internal environment within the body. And this is known as homeostasis. So homeostasis is tendency to change with environment. No, not really. If environment is changing, if the environment is becoming hot, that doesn't mean that our body temperature will become hot. So in fact, it is the tendency to resist change. We do not want to change the internal temperature. We want to maintain a condition of equilibrium within the internal environment. So that is homeostasis. Question number 37. The earliest fossil form in the phylogeny of horses is Merichippus, Mesochippus, Eohippus or Equus. So if you look at the evolution of horses, the first one was Eohippus, then was Mesohippus, then Merichippus, then Pliohippus and finally Equus. So therefore the earliest form was Eohippus, which was also called as the down horse and it was very small in size, almost the size of a fox. Question number 38. Extremities, tail and year are relatively shorter in animals living in cooler regions as compared to those inhabiting warmer zones this is so whose rule is this which says that tail ears are relatively smaller in size in organisms which live in cooler areas so this rule was given by allen's this is called allen's rule so this is the correct option Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.